Hello, gamer family. And anyway, as you can tell by the clock, no matter what time zone I'm in, I'm late to the direct. It's because I was sleeping. Um, not general direct, so without the chance of Mario Kart or Fire Emblem news, I don't really care. So I'm just looking at this image, and it looks so wrong. The different sizes of those and. Anyways, um, I wish I wasn't going to react. Actually, whoa. I thought this was supposed to be 15 minutes long. <laughs> I wish I wasn't going to react to this and just watch it on my own. But I said, eh, sometime in the year 2024, there's going to be a Let's Play this game. So I was like, you know what, sure. I imagine a lot of that is actually, like, not even started yet. Because it's supposed to be 15-ish minutes long. Um, oh, I kind of want to sound check for you guys first. Um, it's tempting to use one of those. Um, you can learn a lot about person based on what tabs they have open. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's those are the two YouTube videos I have up. I'm not going to actually play them for the sound check. Oh, okay. Uh, RCCH K and Carly Doctor Who related searches um how loud is it how does it sound okay it is capturing the audio I just need to check because I know with like some the engaged things that came out the Japan only trailers one of them I had the issue of my mic was covering the whole screen I mean my webcam was covering the whole screen so it was unusable and the other one I had an issue of not turning on game audio. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh. There we go. Welcome to the Flower Kingdom, a not-so-distant land just beyond the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario and friends were invited here by the benevolent Prince Florian. But Bowser, the king of the Koopas, had other plans. With just a single touch of the mysterious Wonder Flower, Florian's castle. So he doesn't even try to kidnap royalty this time. That's good. Thanks to his newfound power. Chaos spread across the land. Now, it's up to Mario and friends to stop Bowser and save the Flower Kingdom. Oh, nap, it's back. No Wario Waluigi, though. That's a little sad. I wish they were here. I'm definitely... Just saying, YouTube, I'm playing Stacy. We'll go over what's new in Mario's latest 2D side scrolling adventure. I don't know, you never would have thought me as a Daisy fan, but I am. <laughs> I used to hate Daisy, actually, but I've become a Daisy fan. I don't know why. This is the Flower Kingdom. It's made up of six distinct worlds. Only six? Making a total of seven areas to explore. I'm out. I'm sorry. I'm pausing this because I want to see this kind of stuff. Okay, this Fire Emblem engaging, you're going in a, clock, a, clock, a clockwise order to go through all the worlds. And then you're going to the center. Um, that is quite literally a Fire Emblem engage. That is quite literally Fire Emblem engage uh, world map progression. Anyways. Your adventure begins among the tubular hills of Pipe Rock Plateau. Oh, those are in the same world? That's nice. The freezing foot of the mountain, you'll be aiming for new heights in Flop Puff Peaks. Many trials await amidst the picturesque scenery and radiant cascades of shining falls. 
traverse multiple islands, dive into the sea, and spelunk through caves at the heart of the Flower Kingdom, the Petal Isles. There's also an arid desert with white sand as far as the eye can see. An uncanny forest lined Yay. with giant mushrooms. A scorching hot world full of molten magma and more. Oh. A rich variety of oh. courses await cool. in each Spikes world. Spikes of throw fire. Move around the map in each world to select a course. You can even walk freely through open areas you find. In these spaces, oh, that's if you're not cool. quite ready to take on a particular course, you can try a different one instead. Play them in any order you like. Mm. Once you've played a course, you can quickly come back to it through the courses menu. It's an easy way to find the ones you want to play again. So it seems like there's actually a lot of levels. While in courses, you might notice some talking flowers. Get close and... Onward and upward! How'd you get up here? What a pretty sunset. They'll talk to you, livening up your adventure. I wonder it honestly you seems kind of annoying, though. Give you hints. wonder if you can get over there. More coins. You'd share your water with me? Besides Mario, you can also play as... Luigi. Peach. Daisy, one of two toads, and Toadette. Oh, I didn't even know the Toadette was there. So go with your favorite, or mix it up. The Yoshis and Nabbit, on the other hand, won't take damage. They're a great choice if you're looking for a more easygoing experience. Careful though, they'll still lose a life if they fall down a pit, so watch your step. Additionally, the Yoshis can flutter jump, eat objects, and spit them back at enemies. Speaking of enemies, here are some of the new ones you'll find. Hoppy cats will copy the player and jump when you jump. We didn't need a new enemy for that. There's already one of those Melon in 3D world. Plants will spit seeds from their mouths. Condarts will fly at you and stick their beaks where they don't belong. When conks attack, they'll even plow through goo. Mumsies can be unraveled if you position yourself just right. Mamas will eat anything that comes too close to their gaping mouths. There are plenty more new enemies for you to discover as well. Goombas, Koopa Troopas, Boos, Locky Twos, and other familiar foes are also here. And Wigglers. <gasps> Ooh! Next, let's look at the new power-ups. Bubble flower. In elephant form, make the most of your nose and your size. Swing your trunk to attack enemies, destroy blocks, and even do this. In this form, you can easily break through blocks and dash across large gaps. See? If you store water in your trunk and spray it out, who knows what might happen? Thank you! That trunk sure is useful, huh? It's not just Mario, though. <laughs> Luigi, the Toads, hey Peach, Daisy, and Toadette all have elephant forms as well. The bubble form allows you to blow light, floating bubbles. They can be used to capture and defeat enemies from a distance. They'll also drift toward nearby foes. You can take care of enemies surrounding you in one go. Defeat typically impervious foes and knock out baddies on the other side of walls. You can even jump off them, like platforms. Bubbles make it a bit easier to get to those hard to reach places. That looks like a really good power up if you're good at using it. While in drill form, you'll get a pretty nifty drill. This makes dealing with spiky. Ah, it's like the spiny shell in Mario Maker. Enemies of breeze. Or you can use it to drill down. It also allows you to burrow and move through the ground. In a tough spot, dig away. You can even burrow into the ceiling. Whoa! I wasn't expecting company. Plus, the classic fire form makes a return. Oh, and you can.
can hang on to an extra power-up. In a pinch, bust out a power-up. Or swap them to better fit the situation. I wonder if there's any more returning power-ups. This is a wonder like, flower. Ooh, no, it, mushrooms? Grows in the flower kingdom. It's said they thrive off this world's mysterious power and release it when in bloom. That's the power Bowser was after. When you touch a wonder flower in a course, a wonder effect will trigger, causing some interesting changes. Pipes might start moving. A stampede of enemies can appear. The terrain may tilt. <laughs> you can end up in a free fall. Bubbles might, uh, bubble up. Your perspective can change. That looks like a really fun one. Through space. There are even wonders where your character transforms. Mario might become a Goomba? Or a spike ball? Or blow up like a balloon? When the pink balloon! Your flower, always expect the unexpected. Collect a wonder seed and the course will return to normal. Some courses need to be unlocked using the wonder seeds you've collected. You'll also earn a wonder seed as thanks from a poplin when you clear a course. Okay, so there's one that you can get in a level, then one you get from beating the level. Oh, that's cool. As your adventure progresses, you'll unlock in-game badges that change up the way you play when equipped. Oh wait, really? There are a variety of badges, each with its own special ability. Let's go over some of them. Slow your fall with the parachute cap badge. That one just seems so good. It's your wall jumping abilities with the wall climb jump badge. Unleash a burst of speed while underwater by equipping the dolphin kick badge. You can also break underwater blocks. Oh. Charge up a bounding leap with the crouching high jump badge. Shoot vines in midair and stick to walls with the grappling vine badge. Recover from dangerous drops instantly with the safety bounce badge. Easily find important items using the sensor badge. Draw in nearby Mula with the coin magnet badge. So what do the wonder coins do? Your enemies and yourself with the invisibility badge. You will not stop dashing with the jet run badge. And you can run in the air for a bit. There are many more badges with different abilities, from the convenient to the unconventional. Only one badge can be equipped per course. Equip them from the world map or when starting a course. Or if you don't make it through, grab a different badge and try again. Some badges can be earned by clearing special badge challenge courses. Go for it! While others can be purchased from poplin shops on the world map. Be sure ah. to exchange flower coins you collect in courses what for badges. And there's a wonder seed there too. Up to four people can play locally on the same Nintendo Switch system. Pick your favorite character and jump into the adventure together. If a player is defeated in local co-op, their character will float around the course as a ghost. If another player reaches them before time runs out, they'll jump right back into action. Your group won't lose a life either. <gasps> and just so you know, if someone is playing as a Yoshi, you can jump on their back and ride them around the course. Even if you're also playing as a Yoshi. <laughs> or if you're an elephant. <laughs> Yoshi on Yoshi. Oh, I'm not going to say that online, sentence for that. see other players on the world map and in courses. These are people from around the world, enjoying the game in real time, appearing as live player shadows. 
Just like I wonder if that's one of the reasons why they invited, like, didn't they, like, invite News Outlets to actually play this game? Players can send greetings and share in game items. Even though you won't be playing together directly, you'll get to experience a subtle connection with other players online as you enjoy this new adventure together. You can also place a standee in a course. Standees can revive ghosts, so place them in not so easy areas and help your fellow players. You can purchase standee surprises from the Poplin shops to add more to your collection. You never know which standee you'll get. When you come into contact with an online player or their standee, you'll see their username and heart points. These points show how much they've helped other players on their adventure. Reviving ghosts, gifting items, reaching the goal pole together, and more will earn you heart points. While playing online, you also have the option of creating a room to get together with friends. In a shared room, you can see which courses your friends are playing, enter courses together, and even race through certain courses. Start a race by hitting the race block. With Nintendo Switch Internet? Make a run for it. Reaching the goal pole isn't the only way to finish a race, though. In some courses, you'll need to grab a Wonder Seed or defeat a boss instead. Whether you're casually connecting with players from around the world or syncing up with friends for riveting races, you can enhance your experience with online play. What a beautiful day! into the unexpected with Mario and Friends Whoa! when Super Mario Brothers Wonder launches on the Nintendo Switch system October 20th. Plus, a new Nintendo Switch OLED That's all red. Mario Red Edition is also on the way. If you look closely, you'll find Mario and some hidden coins. Wow! Hidden! OLED That's model, so Mario stupid. Red Edition launches October 6th. It's just a red switch and switch dock. Oh, that's it. No proper ending or anything. Um, as I talk about it, let's... <clears throat> let's just have... Oh my god, I can't even find the direct. Let's have a random image up from the direct as I'm talking about it. Yeah. That's the power belt was after when you touch a wonder oh, power okay um let's do whatever this is yep this is the that one this screen does I talk about it oh my god oh. <laughs> anyways um as far as game specific directs go it was fine I haven't watched a ton of game game specific directs I typically don't have a reason to um, I know I didn't last year with Splatoon 3, I did not care. I did it with Splatoon, not Splatoon, I did it with Xenoblade 3. I got up really early in the morning to watch it, as it was a 7 a.m. Pacific Time one as well. Or was it a 6 p.m. I mean, 6 a.m. Pacific. It was either 7 or 6. I want to say it actually might have been 6 a.m. Pacific. Uh, I don't know, I'll have to check. Um, I feel like that direct was meteor. But Xenoblade's also inherently a lot more complex of a game than a 2D Mario. 2D Marios are simple, they're platformers, and no matter how much you add to them, they're still platformers, which makes them inherently more simple as opposed to something like Xenoblade. Um, I don't know. I don't think this, this Direct had a reason to exist. I think it would have just been better to have a long trailer 
in the next general direct, which September has had a direct every year since the Switch came out. That includes 2020, which had the 30th anniversary, 35th anniversary of Mario Direct, so it's had a direct every year. This is in August. This one's in August, which means that uh, I still expect to get a general one in September. If this was in September, this direct was in September, I would not be so certain about that, but I am. That being said, I just don't feel like this had a reason to be its own thing. I think I would have rather them just make a slightly longer general direct with this in it. or Especially since we're probably going to start hitting a little bit of a drought until the next system after this year. Uh, like, obviously, we most likely got Fire Emblem early next year. We got the... We got Dark Moon Remastered. We got the Princess Peach game. We got this. We probably got Metroid Remasters. Besides that, I kind of expect a content dry up. Um, so I think it would have been better just to put cut out cut out some of the dead room in this trailer. Like cut out where you're introducing all like the new enemies. Make the introducing the characters a lot faster since there's no new ones. Make that faster, more compacted. Um, spend a little bit less time on the power-ups. Maybe show that, they, show that they exist, but not really go more into depth on them. Condense all that in. Condense the overview of the levels a little bit. And then, just once you condense it to about somewhere between 7 and 10 minutes, just put that in a general direct, and I think that would have been better. Because, like, Three Houses got, like, a, what, 7-minute trailer in February 2019? If Three Houses is more niche game... For, from, from a niche franchise can get a long direct trailer Bayonetta one of the directs I believe a pretty long one as well then Super Mario Wonder can have a 7 to 10 minute thing in a direct and I think that just would have been better as I just don't feel like this announced enough to justify being a direct it was good it was good this game again I, Super Mario 64 started airing um 2D platformers are not my favorite thing in the universe. In fact, I'd argue that for the most part, I don't like them. Even when, even what was considered to be some of the best ones. Mario 3, Mario World, I can't get very far. I just can't. The one that I've actually gotten furthest in is Super, New Super 2 and New Super U. And New Super U, I consider to be awful. I consider it to be a bad game. Uh, 2... I consider it to be a guilty pleasure, which also means that I don't think it's a good game. Three and World are good, I just I just can't get into them. Metroidvanias are different, I actually do enjoy them. But they also have a whole different feel to them than, you know, this. Um, that being said, Wonder looks... It, it looks really good. Um, it looks like they added a lot of really cool mechanics. Talking flowers are gonna get into so annoying, so annoying, bro. But visually, the, visually, this game looks pretty good. This is a good-looking Mario platformer. Um, in fact, I'd say it's just a good-looking game. It looks smooth and all that. The power-ups do look fun. Um, the elephant one. I don't like how it looks on the princesses. I don't like how Elephant Peach or Daisy look. I think it looks fine in Mario Luigi. But I don't like how it looks on them. Um, the bubble power-up seems like, for a lot of people, it's going to... If I had, honestly, it's one of those powers that I feel like, for a lot of those people who are not as experienced in younger kids, the bubble power-up, bubble flower, is going to be considered low tier power up but for the people that are extremely good like the people that are doing like high level Mario Maker levels they are probably going to think they're probably going it's probably going to be the best power up for them because it'll allow them to pull off some really cool jumps and tricks I don't expect to be able to do half of what they intend for you to be able to do with the bubble flower but that's okay uh, the drill one seems cool Badges, though. Badges, I think, are a real game changer here, actually, of everything I've said. Not even the Wonder Flower. Wonder Flower is just a gimmick. Badges. Badges seem so cool. Um, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. How many more times did I say yeah um? That's that's the question. The second time when I said that it was just because I said yeah um so many times already during the video and you know, yeah. Um. I try not to say it again. Uh, it was a good trailer. I I I think it could have been a little shorter personally. Like, I don't need to know about melon piranha plants. Mama is at a one uh, school to know. Like, I definitely don't need to know about returning enemies. Yeah, that was the power ups. Those are power ups. Let's go back to the world map. That's right. Doesn't start till about thirty. Uh, the world map stuff is also kind of cool. Where there's kind of some free, air, more free to explore areas. In each world. Hey, we, no, that's not it. Oh my gosh. That's all the levels in Just World 1. Let's assume every dot is a level. With smaller dots being more minigame type levels since we know that those exist. Thirteen full level sorry, fifteen full levels. I didn't see the ones down there. Five more minigame esque levels. And then we could also probably assume that Mario's head is over another one. That is actually gnarly. That That's a good amount of levels. That's actually a really good amount of levels. There are only six worlds. But it seems like they decided to jam them full of content. Come on, let's Making get it. A total of... yeah. So this is looks to be like a combination. World one is just the typical grassy plain area with a with a little bit of looks like desert and mountain to it, which is really cool. It's a cool war pipe shenanigans. Oh, uh, that's like the snow and the cloud area combined. That kind of looks like a... I don't even know. I can't... I can't remember. Petal Isles, which I have a feeling you have to go through briefly in... Like, to get in between places is the beach one. Desert. Jungle. Volcano. So, yeah. That's kind of more mountain area. Yeah. Many um, trials await amidst the picturesque scenery and radiant cascades of shining falls. So kind of a water mountain hybrid. Traverse multiple islands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's cool. Goodbye, YouTube.